Hey folks, Phil here for a quick announcement before we get started. Um, I will be starting my teacher work week next week, so we will be returning to the normal five days a week content model. I hope you have enjoyed the bonus videos over the summer, and those will 100% return next summer. Um, so thank you for your support, and uh, enjoy the show. Hello folks, Phil Gallagher of Thraven, you here for another legacy video. Today's video is supported by Big Pun, who wanted to fuel my nostalgia in playing a Phyrexian Obliterator decklist. Um, this card is, is, like, so big and so bad and just, like, absolutely iconic to me. Um, outside of white removal, this thing is an absolute pain in the butt to take out, since, like, the sacrifice clause means that red removal is often no good, and you don't really want to deal with that creature in combat, either. And so today we are going to be playing like this, like, essentially mono black nostalgia deck list. Um, this channel is no stranger to using Dark Ritual to fuel all sorts of fun mono black cards. And um, essentially the core of this deck is the black red prosper deck list that I played, oh, I don't know, maybe three or four weeks ago at this point. And I've just removed the red and added more copies of mono black goodness. So we don't have the Gurmag Anglers and the Fetchlands, the Prospers and the Lightning Bolts anymore. But we've kind of replaced those with Phyrexian Obliterators. And one of the comments that I got on that Prosper video was like, you know, there is a severe lack of greatness at any cost in this deck list. And you know what? Honestly, I agree. It's possible that if I'm going to play like Wolf Bob and Thoughtseize, I need a little bit of lifelink in here. But all the ideas that I could come up with lifelink were like definitely questionable. and. You know, it's a nostalgia video for sure, but I didn't know if we were supposed to go like Vampire Nighthawk or Nighthawk Scavenger levels of deep in this video, and I restrained myself. Um, I did a little bit of gold fishing of this deck list, and this deck list can make your opponent discard a lot of cards. So, like, there's a lot of worlds where we'll curve like a Thought Seize into a Hymn into some other discard spell, into Turok uh, kicked on turn four. And I forget who posted it, but somebody on Twitter recently posted a screenshot of like, yeah, you ever been attacked by a 2-1 Turok for 10 turns in a row and died because you literally had no outs to it? Yeah, me either. And that inspired me to give Turok another chance. I've been a little low on this card, it's very good in certain matchups where it's incredibly difficult to remove, and we might be heavy enough on discard with, like, all of the various effects that I have here that, like, it growing to a, like, real beater size and, like, functioning as, like, a Tarmogoyf-type card is, like, actually legit. Um, as far as kind of flex slots in this deck goes... I wanted to just have a really resilient mana base, but I also realized it was probably a good idea to throw in a couple of utility lands. So I've put in two Castle Locked Wains, which has more than pulled its weight in these sorts of decks. Um, and I'm going to try one Takenuma Abandoned Mire to like get back my Obliterators and Bobs and stuff. I have not been impressed by this card in any format. Um, it, it just like feels so painfully slow. Like It's usually going to be four mana. Like, it costs one less for each legendary creature that we're playing, but, you know, it, its cost is unlikely to be reduced on the regular. And, like, I have to pay the four mana to do this and then, like, the mana for my creature, so, like, that's a lot. But I didn't want to play any colorless producing lands. Like, playing four Urza's Saga and a handful of Urborgs is another way to, like, get extra value out of the mana base of this deck list. But, like... We're not, we're not fucking around today, right? Like, we are playing black, 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 black cards. So, like, every time I control an Urza Saga, like, that is keeping me from, like, him to Turoking, obliterating, or, like, Turok kicking on curve. So, like, as much as I love Urza Saga and, like, what it adds to a monocolor deck, I don't think this is the home for it. As far as the sideboard goes, we're very heavy on Graveyard Hate, like, between, like, the main deck Dalthy Voidwalkers, Ley Lines, and the Surgicals, like, we should not have much trouble with graveyard-based decks. Um, the reason why I'm playing Surgical is actually for combo decks, not necessarily just for the graveyard-based stuff. 
Um, I'm going to have the ability to have more turn one plays versus um, combo decks, and I'm going to bring in surgicals as well so that I can, you know, surgically extract a doomsday or whatever key card I really need to take out for the matchup. Um, yeah, otherwise the remainder of the sideboard is just extra removal for decks like Delver and Death and Taxes and Elves and stuff like that. So uh, let's just, uh, let's just, let's just jam some Phyrexian Obliterators and see what happens. Um, these sorts of decks are relatively powerful. They're rarely the best thing that you can be doing since like top decks have gotten so powerful over the last couple of years, but they're certainly going to be fun. Anyway, if you're new here and you like what you see, please consider subscribing, and if you are a regular, throw me a like before this video begins. That's the easiest way to support my content for free. If you have the means to support me in a financial way, please consider becoming a Patreon subscriber, a YouTube member, or doing a donation deck list of your own to get one of your decks on the channel. Let's battle. This right here, this is some honest-to-goodness magic, right? Like, thought sees into him to Turok, into Liliana of the Veil, or Opposition Agent, like, mwah. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, just like, don't turn one me. Don't turn one me. I have so much discard. I have so much to live for. What the fu- how, how many spirit guides? Okay. First of all, how dare you? How dare you? <laughs> Sorry, Phil. <laughs> I have been betrayed. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll, we'll let them do their thing for the camera. <laughs> uh, let's see if there's anything interesting here. So there's the Thassa's Oracle. They do have Memories Journey. They've got Cabal Therapy and Bridge from below. They've got Dread Return. All right, next game. Next game. All right, we got bullied. We got bullied, YouTube. However, we, we are now looking to be the bully. Absolutely. At least nine cards getting boarded in, maybe. Maybe twelve. Um, Plague Engineer, while it uh kills Narc Amoeba, uh, due to the bridge from below, that doesn't actually stop my opponent. So this is probably not a sudden edict game most of the time. This is probably not a Phyrexian obliterator game most of the time. This still leaves me with 16 creatures to actually end the game with, and this is 61 cards. I'm probably not boarding in more Liliana of the Veils. And maybe I can pull, like, one land here. Pull a Takenuma and run 22. Cause they don't, I don't really want to cut anything else here. I would like to play first. Okay, this land not being a swamp is a little annoying here. But overall, I think this hand is just, like, so powerful that I'm okay with that. All right. Leyline as the opening hand move. Tapped Castle Lock, Wayne, pass the turn. All right, and no movement from my opponent. Ooh, 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 this is so much shit. This is absolutely so much shit. Okay. So Double Dark Ritual brings me up to five mana. I will start with a Thought Seize here. Wow, they didn't fire off the Force of Vigor in response on the Leyline. All right. I'm going to take that. Uh, your opponent says accidentally hit okay. Uh, honestly, it might have been worse for them if they did it. So let's fire off a Douthy Voidwalker. And then I'll him to Torok my opponent. Your opponent says never mind, wouldn't have mattered, jeez. Yeah, uh, yeah, it wouldn't have. Yeah, so if they pitch turn Tabor Symb Symbiosis and a card from their hand in order to answer the ley line, I then, like, thought seize them play Douthy Voidwalker and him to Turok them, and they're, like, left on nothing still, and it honestly might have been worse. Uh, yeah, Dex, uh, Dex pretty much perfect. I could just play one more land over, like, the one of Random Lily that I've got. Um, this hand doesn't have enough mana. And also just, like, is not fast enough for being on the draw. So let's do a mulligan here. Alright. My opponent is keeping a 7. I think this hand is totally good if I am on the play and a little questionable on the draw. I really want a ley line. I think I'm going to go deeper. Like, this hand is very good if I'm on the play, but I, I just don't think it makes the cut on the draw. I'm going to keep this. I don't want Lily. And then it's a question of, like, do I want the third land or the second ley line? 
I think I want the second Ley Line. Second Ley Line doesn't help against Force of Vigor, but it helps against other random things that just answer one permanent. Or actually, this is just fine instead of second Swamp. All right, let's start with those in play. Yeah, here, here's to hoping that, like, the combination of Leyline and Thoughtseize can buy me time to get to something that actually fully stops my opponent. All right, opponents, opponents doing things. Okay, cool. It is just a pedal. That is not bad for me. Here's to hoping that if my opponent Force of Vigors... Ooh, okay, wow, they, uh, they kept a hand that could potentially turn one and then failed. If I take that Dread Return... And they actually win. Uh, what is what is memory? How does memory's journey read? I forget. I feel like that card is important here. Okay, it shuffles from graveyard into library. So if I take that dread return, actually with double Narcomiba in hand, that's actually very hard for them to win too. Um, I'm just gonna take the Balustrade Spy though. I think there's worlds where. If I take the Dread Return, my opponent just, like, Dark Rituals out a Spy, and I lose to it in the, like, short to mid term. Alright. I'm probably gonna use Dark Ritual to just, like, draw a card with Castle Locked Wayne here. Like, not how I want to use that card, but I think it's how I'm going to use that card. So, like, I lose two to draw a card here. Fantastic. Um, I think I just want to put this in play and then thought sees my opponent to grow this creature. All right, there's my thought sees. At this point, I'm not really worried about getting comboed off. I'm just going to keep taking their creatures, I think. This is going to be a pretty thick Torok in a couple of turns. Okay, there is a tapped land. Yes, yes, yes. All right, what just entered the exile zone? All right, a dark ritual and a narc amoeba are gone. And like, Karak beginning to do some heavy lifting. Like, as a 5 4, this is now a three turn clock. All right, I'll uh, bash in for five more. Opponent goes to 10. They really need a lot here. They need, like, Force of Vigor plus Green Card, neither of which they had a turn or so ago. Let's draw another card. That's not what I'm looking for. Let's play a land. Draw another card. Another Turok doesn't do me any good here. So they need to have Force of Vigor Green Card right now. Otherwise, I think the game is over. That should do it. Well, I guess they can Dark Ritual out a blocker. Oh? I don't really know how they win. Like, they have a Narc Amoeba in hand. Yeah, yeah, and they, they, they agree. We have gotten the uh, GG. Yeah, like, with a Narc Amoeba in hand, a Narc Amoeba in exile, the Dread Return in hand, and Double Ley Line in play, like, that, that is a tough spot. All right, round two. We're on the play. We're a little too Mana Light here, so I'm going to go ahead and Mulligan. Um, whereas I like this hand a lot. A redundant Thoughtseize or an Obliterator probably goes back here. If I draw a land, there's an opportunity to cast a Thoughtseize on turn three. But double Thoughtseize plus Bob is a lot on my life total. So I might just throw back the second Thoughtseize here. And I think I am going to do that. Like if we're playing against combo, I really want that other Thoughtseize. But if I'm playing against something fair... Like Delver, like that's that's just a lot of life loss. I am currently unsure whether or not my turn two play will be him or Dark Confidant, but like luckily we have a Thought Seize to kind of guide that decision. I draw a land next turn so that I'm more likely to hit land drop three. Like maybe I play um, him in a vacuum, and if I don't hit that land drop, maybe I play Bob. All right, let's uh, let's do some stuff. My opponent has mulliganed once already. Man, that is kind of a pain in the ass. I think I take Gamble so that my opponent can't get Life from the Loam active, and then I try to him to Turok one of the two combo pieces out of their hand. Um, 
we don't really want to fight the Life from the Loam deck with Discard. Okay, so that was their draw for turn. So they'll play Exploration in all likelihood. Yep. Ooh, okay. Um, I can potentially get rid of multiple combo pieces here at the same time. Um, and I'm going to attempt that. The issue here is that, like, this still can find combo pieces and other relevant lands. Um, the good news is that, like, my creatures probably get to run free for a little while. Uh, that's actually annoying versus Torok, um, who is legendary. All right, opponent holding up the ability to tutor. Um, I think unquestionably, like, this is just a Dark Confidant turn. And then, like, we're hoping to put a Phyraxian Obliterator into play. And maybe draw, like, a Sudden Edict that can answer this Elvish Reclaimer. I've got a few more Edicts available um, for the post-sideboard games. I've got, I've got, like, four Sudden Edicts as things that matter in Game 1 scenarios. So life is not great, basically. All right, Bob. We've, we've got work to do. Opposition Agent. Hell yeah. Um, so we're just going to be playing a game of chicken with that, it looks like. Yeah, opponent can't really tap their mana because if they do, Opposition Agent goes down. And I can't really cast this Opposition Agent because, like, then my opponent finds their Dark Depths. Wild, okay. Uh, I'm going to take that hit. My opponent might have drawn a crop rotation. Really awkward if they crop rotation in response to this. But I think I need to use my mana like I am at 12 life. Yep, okay, they drew crop rotation. Yeah, I just don't think I can take, like, the five-ish damage that I'm likely to take in a turn cycle here. And, like, realistically win the game. Holy shit. So this turn should be the Liliana of the Veil. So that I can keep the Sorcery Speed Sudden Edict for the future. Sorry, the Instant Speed Sudden Edict for the future. Okay, I am now in actively a good position. Uh, hey, hey, Bob? <laughs> Jill? Jill, Bob? Relax? Um, realistically, I am not expecting very many things that can beat me in this position. However, crop rotation... Uh, no, crop rotation is off. Not expecting spirit guides. I think I can just try to wipe out my opponent's hand here. I think I can go ahead and go kicked to a rock. My opponent discards two cards. Um, I am absolutely willing to just plus this and discard a card of my own here to just have higher loyalty on my planeswalker. Then I have four, seven, eight, nine. So this is lethal damage for this turn cycle. Woo hoo hoo hoo! He turned that one around. I wonder if my opponent, like, has lines that are better for them, where they... Hmm. Yeah, never, never mind, let's not go down that road of thought. Okay, so I can play Surgicals, I can play Liliana's as more Edicts, and I can play Leyline of the Voids. I'm probably boarding in all of those cards. Um, we'll kind of see. The discard is less good against my opponent than I would like it to be. So I'm probably going to go down a little bit on that. Like, when, when opponent just has access to life from the loam in their deck and, like, can just fill their hand full of cards, like, the power of things like him to Turok is mitigated a lot. It's still one of my primary angles of disruption, so I don't know that I can get rid of all of it, but I'm probably going to get rid of some. Probably the hymns are going here. Like, they hit really hard, but I think it's most important for me to, like, play Thoughtseize early and, like, take an Exploration or an Elvish Reclaimer or something rather than attack for density. From there, maybe Turox. That leaves me with 16 creatures. The Bobs are a little scary with uh, ley lines in the deck, but it's greatness at any cost, not greatness at the cost of one life per turn. Isn't Phyrexian Arena. I think I'm good with this. I think this matchup is tough, generally speaking. Turn one, opposition agent. It's a little hard to argue with that. And is a little softer to a punishing fire than I would like. 
but like stopping that deck from tutoring is huge. Please don't play a fetch. Okay. There is a Dalthy Voidwalker. Um, I am just going to do this now. Like, there's a very long conversation to be had about when to play cards like Opposition Agent and Avon Mind Sensor. Um, but generally speaking, I am a fan of getting those cards into play ASAP. Super awkward to attack this into an Endurance. It's also very awkward to, like, not attack with my 3-2. Um, accordingly, I think I'm just getting in there. Um, I'm, I'm bad against an Endurance anyway, so I think I'm just going to eat the damage here. Dothy Voidwalker plus Surgical at the same time, also a little awkward. Just Thespian stage copying. Oh, it's cycling a Triome. Sure. More so than anything here, really looking to draw an Edict, especially an Instant Speed one, so that I feel safer. A Mox Diamond, sure. Starting a Wasteland. Yeah, rock, rock solid mana base here. All right, um, let's get my hits in. And uh, hopefully we just kind of continue to go unmolested here. Nice. I think I am fine spending my Dark Ritual to do this, seeing as like I can play a card like an Obliterator next turn naturally anyway. Okay. Safe so far. Six more damage. Delicious. I don't really have anything going on, but hopefully my opponent doesn't either. Force of Vigor taking out the Ley Line, sure. That does not impact the lethal damage that is on board. Wow. I feel like we just, like, stole an entire match there. Um, GG's. I think this is one of the first really tough opening hands that I've opened on. Because multiple unblockable Douthy Voidwalkers that are also, like, incidental graveyard hate for things like Delvers, like, makes his hand totally reasonable, but I'm not doing anything fast. I don't have a Dark Ritual to power out any of this stuff. I'm not disrupting many decks. I think this is still a keep, but it's, like, barely a keep. It's a little questionable. Oh, opponent is mulliganing to five. It's not the best for me on a hand where I don't have, like, a Thoughtseize. We do only have eight one-drops. Like, to be fair. So, I don't, I don't think I can expect to just, like, have the nuts every game, given that. Alright, opponent, what are you doing? And does it care about Douthy Voidwalker? It cares about Douthy Voidwalker. We're playing against Dredge. Okay, so, like, the, the, the primary question here will be, like, is my turn to Douthy Voidwalker fast enough? That is double Grave Troll. That is horrifying. That is very spooky. Alright. Womp go, and it's just like, how how big is this turn from my opponent? Because if it is like, breakthrough cap- Oh, it's the uh, Otherworldly Gaze version, um, which looks at the top three cards of your library, put them back in your- put any number of them into your graveyard and the rest on top of your library in any order, um, which is really interesting because it's a way to like put cards like Narc Amoeba or a Dredger back on top of your library. Oh, oh god, it's a breakthrough. So it's a breakthrough with multiple Grave Trolls in Graveyard. Um, this is very scary. Um, a lot of how bad this is going to be is fully dependent on how many Narc Amoebas my opponents hit. There's one. There's two. Two with multiple Bridge from Belows. Ah, uh, fuck. So I need to think about conceding here. I think my opponent is putting enough shit into play that I don't want that that like I don't want them to know that Dothy Voidwalker is coming. So they are going to Cabal Therapy target me, get two zombies, Cabal Therapy target me again, get two more zombies, and Hogak. And I don't think I want my opponent to see my hand here. Yeah, so like we we had the the turn to win, but they were on the play. They they did their turn to win before I did my turn to win. Uh, luckily, like we have great tools for the matchup. Like we get surgical, we get leyline. I'll probably play plague engineer. Um, my discard is not really great. 
Um, so like Dalthy Voidwalker can go, Liliana of the Veil can probably go, him to Turok can probably go. I'll probably keep Thoughtseize as early disruption. Wait, hold on, what did I... That was literally just the wrong pile of cards that I grabbed. Like, I, I don't want to make my opponent discard in most cases. Alright, so now we're way better at getting to Dalthy Voidwalker with Leyline of the Void as a bridge card. Opposition Agent, not exactly great, but opponent is playing Fetchlands in this blue version. Um, It's possible I want to play some number of Inquisition of Kozilek to just, like, take answers to Leyline. I would like to play first. Um, this hand is uh, medium minus. I'm gonna mulligan. Like I have, I have ley lines. I have acceleration. Yeah, this is a protected ley line hand. I'm going to keep this. I think I'm gonna throw back the second thought season. Keep the obliterator. Like, assuming it can get into play, that effect is very strong. I am hoping to win game two on the back of ley line, and then. Like, maybe win game three on a Dark Ritual Dalthy Voidwalker, or something like that. I... this just enters untapped, right? Well, I guess I don't need to play that, like... There's worlds. Okay. So, I am just going to, I think, take the Faithless Looting here. Alright. We have punched a major hole in my opponent's hand. Like, they can use Otherworldly Gaze as a manipulation card. To try to find an answer to this ley line. I'm hoping to diversify. Uh, but I don't really have anything going on for a little while still. Alright, there is the otherworldly gaze. Alright, looks like they uh junked one, two, three. They they junked everything there. They have very specific things that they're looking for at this point. One 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 Golgari Thug. That cost my opponent two life. Indeed. It's sometimes what you gotta do. Alright, um... Yeah. A human thug, right? Human thug, human warrior. Let's just take it out. Like, there's worlds where I want that on, uh... Whatever creature type Narc Amoeba is. Alright. A lot of damage. Don't super care about that. Am I willing to attack in? I think I'm willing to attack in. Like, if I trade these so that Obliterator gets in, like, and doesn't die, that's good for me. Although, Obliterator would be interesting as well. Let's see if opponent wants to trade these. They do not want to trade these. Obliterate! I actually might see the Abandoned Mire do something in this game here. I mean, yeah. I am good with that. Okay, that's good enough to get the concession. So, now we've got to do it again, and the game on the draw is harder. On the draw, I, like, some Inquisitions give me additional turn one plays. Probably can't hurt. Like, Opposition Agent isn't doing me a lot of favors. This missing um, a Force of Vigor effect is kind of huge, though. That's very awkward for me. But it's very nice to like play, play like Dark Ritual into one of these into Dalthy Voidwalker to help protect it. So I think I'm going to be okay with that awkwardness accordingly. Okay, I have what would be a great hand versus normal decks, but it's just unplayable here. Um, I don't think turn two Dalthy Voidwalker is fast enough on the draw. I'm going to go ahead and mulligan again. This is easily the best hand I've had so far. I'm going to keep this, getting rid of a Phyrexian Obliterator and probably a land. Um, this is not my ideal hand. Like, my ideal hand has, like, Swamp, Dark Ritual, Dalthy Voidwalker, and Leyline of the Void all. But that's really a lot to ask for. Alright. So, I think I actually save Dark Ritual to Leyline of the Void next turn. And then cast an Inquisition. Um, I'd probably take the Wisp Mare and then just put Leyline back into play next turn. Yeah, let's do that. Alright, there is a City of Brass drawn, which means that my opponent can careful study into Cabal Therapy. Okay, that is not what is happening, though. They may not be expecting, like, Dark Ritual Leyline of the Void, because, like, a lot of times I would have Dark Ritualed 
on turn one. Okay. Am I safe now? I guess, like, a careful study can still hit, like, Narc Amoeba and Cabal Therapy. It's just Narc Amoeba. Ooh, opponent has Leyland of Sanctity. That's a scary card. Okay, so those Stinkweed Imps are now in Graveyard. Alright, so... Dark Ritual, Playline of the Void. And I'll have Bob as a follow-up in future turns. This is pretty good, because opponent has gone through, like, Chain of Vapor and Wismare already as outs to this Leyline. Having access to that Inquisition of Kozilek was pretty huge, because, like, otherwise my opponent just, like, oop, gets rid of my Leyline. My opponent is going to take a lot of damage from their lands. So my opponent junked two cards and kept something on top. So they potentially found an answer to Leyline of the Void. Not with 100% certainty, like they could have just kept something else that is going to help them dig, but like they junked Faithless Looting, so, you know, not necessarily 100% on that. Good news is that, like, I'm going to just be on 4 mana. Bouncing Leyline out of play is only a medium strength play. Yeah, that's, that's the sort of thing my opponent needed to do. So, now they've, now they've got an opening. So, like, they can cast a big breakthrough or something like that. They've got a fiery eyelet that they can immediately cycle. I'm hoping they can't do better than that. Eh, that's not good for me. There is, oh, fuck. That's scary. Uh, actually, I guess they, no, there is a Cabal Therapy. Um, only one bridge. That could have been worse. My opponent did not attack me for one with Narc Amoeba there. Um, very notably. Alright, Bob. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Alright. So I can Swamp Leyline this turn, and then get rid of these Narc Amoebas the following turn. That sounds great. Do I want to attack with Bob? No. Do not. Opponent has multiple otherworldly gaze in graveyard to uh, help manipulate for relevant cards, by the way. Alright, what do we got? Don't really want another Bob. Might be playing one anyway. I guess a Chain of Vapor on Leyline of the Void in response to this is super awkward, huh? Our illusions? Our illusions. Alright, um, and just in case you're not familiar with the interaction here, Leyline of the Void is keeping those from hitting the graveyard, so my opponent's bridge from below does not actually trigger. Let's bash in for two, and then I have to decide whether or not I'm playing a second Bob out. I probably am. Like, this puts my opponent to 11, and then having six power in play is a two-turn clock. There's no world. Well, okay, there's very few worlds in which I die to Dark Confidant triggers from 14. Especially given that, like, I have drawn multiple ley lines already. Alright, there's Otherworldly Gaze. Yeah, I basically would have to hit, like, Mono 3 and 4 drops in order to kill myself with Bobs. Like, 4, 8, 12, 16. Like, th that's the sort of caliber of Bob hits that would have to happen for me to die to my own Bobs before I kill my opponent here. Alright. I don't know how many Wispmares my opponent is playing, but, like, I have seen 3 already. Don't know if they are on the full play set of those. Like, th this list is just, like, new enough and unfamiliar enough to me that I don't know, like, the exact number of outs that my opponent has for stuff. Wow, it is another Wismare. All right, they do have the full play set. Um, so I could really use Bob to deliver here and find another piece of graveyard hate. The opponent has a Cabal Therapy, which I think is why they have paused here. All right, Bob. I don't want more bobs. A lot. Alright. Am I happy if a bob gets blocked? Yes, because a bob dies. Am I happy if Plague Engineer gets blocked? A bridge from below is taken out of the picture. My opponent has one zombie towards getting Hogak into play. Yes, so I think I am happy with all of these scenarios. Um, Definitely a little scared, though. Alright, so opponent takes... Four. And that kills their bridge from below. I think I play out this new Bob. Um, opponent can have a big turn here. Like, they get a dredge six, and then potentially more off of this. But they're very much hurting in terms of life total. 
Okay, there is a Narc Amoeba that instantly dies due to Plague Engineer. And there's not a bridge in there. Opponent can take another Dredge 6 by going to 1. For the number of times that I played Leyline of the Void this game, this game is, like, still very close. I think I've come out on the right side of it, but... I was definitely sweating it a little bit. We're 3-0 now? Yeah, we're 3-0. Alright, chatted with my opponent a bit. They're a fan of the channel. Uh, my opening hand is really good. Uh, like, I've got Thoughtseize into Bob, into Opposition Agent, into Obliterator. Beautiful curve. Now, opponent has Mulligan to 5. So my Thoughtseize is likely to be very good if I don't randomly get turn 1. Oh, ho, ho. Yeah, we're, we're going to be good against this deck, I think. Yeah, so Chalice... Chalice not going to stop Phyrexian Obliterator from obliterating. Blood Moon not stopping Swamps. Yeah, um, hands good. Now, if opponent can go Ancient Tomb into like a Rabble Master or something, that's pretty respectable. But I think if they don't have a Soul Land, they're just not in this game. Oh no. Oh god, this Hymn to Turok is going to be so good. So good. Oh, my opponent is is in their trophy match. <laughs> I I will wish them luck, but game one not not looking so hot for them. Yeah. So like when you first start playing Magic Online, like the the first trophy means a lot. Like that's kind of one of your first like I made it moments. And then from there, each individual trophy matters less and less. So I want to play Obliterator next turn. And I don't think I need to start drawing cards yet, which is a weird thing to say. But I think I would rather have the flash ability of Opposition Agent to just come into play and block a Goblin token and not let my opponent accumulate a board. Okay, yeah, looks like opponent doesn't have anything this turn. All right, so let's do the end of turn Opposition Agent here. Oh, man, Lily's really good, too. Um... I think this is one of those, like, no matter how I play this out, I win this game situations. So I'm going to play this in the way that uh, puts a Phyrexian Obliterator into play. Um, this is just such a pain in the ass because, like, the Goblin tokens from, like, Legion War Boss and stuff have to attack every combat. So off to a strong start. <laughs> Opponent says, oh, God. Yeah. All right, um, Plague Engineers for Goblins are pretty good. Most of the rest of my sideboard isn't fantastic. Lily of the Veil is potentially something that I'll play. I'm not, like, super thrilled about it um, because a lot of the Goblins have built-in protection against Edicts. It's still nice versus some of the, like, Fireflux Squad type cards. But my Edicts are eh. Just decisively eh. What's my worst card? My, like, my cards aren't really bad, because even just, like, playing Turok as a 2-1 creature that trades with a Rival Master or Legion War Boss is pretty legit. Chalice isn't great against me. Trinosphere is not great against me. Moon is not great against me. They just have to worry about creatures. Maybe Thoughtseize is not accept super acceptable on the draw. I still might play him, because, like, it's him. And then, like, this hedges against Chalice a bit. Like, I don't, I don't know that my opponent is going to know that Chalice is not actually good versus me. Like, I am absolutely playing a brew here. But, like, I've made it so... Like, I basically have four cards that Chalice and Trinosphere care about, my four Dark Rituals. I'm not the biggest fan of this hand. Galthy Voidwalker does not block... We don't have acceleration for opposition agent. I think I can do better. This is better. A little unclear which card goes back. It's a little unclear what I use Dark Ritual to do. Like, I, I think most of the time I'm going to play Dark Ritual on turn two to power out Obliterator. It's a little awkward that I have both Castle Lockwains versus a Blood Moon deck. I'm throwing back probably land. I'm probably throwing back a land to stay flexible here. Although in the worlds where I do get Chalice and I can't Dark Ritual, the lands are super important. Uh, let's throw back a him. I think that hand's really hard. Like, that mulligan decision. 
Okay, so there is the Chalice. We have one of our four cards in hand that care about that. Uh, which is a little frustrating, because, like, my hand is much worse now. Oh. So this is a Chrome Mox purely to uh, make sure that discard doesn't happen on that. All right. So I've got a turn two Bob into a turn three Opposition Agent into hopefully a turn four Obliterator. Now, a Blood Moon is randomly very good against this hand. Okay, Fable is pretty darn good for my opponent here. It is some nice filtering. And, ooh. All right. So, plays are very limited here. I am not exactly looking fantastic. Like, if, if I had kept it, just like... Junk. Trading a him to Torok for one card is not where you want to be. I... I think I just make this trade. I think I just want to keep the board as clear as possible so that Liliana actually has a realistic chance of being a removal spell. Okay, cool. So I have Obliterator next turn. I think I just want a Liliana plus here and discard my Dark Ritual that's dead. Plus, goodbye Dark Rit. Kind of feels like opponent has a bunch of mana sources in hand to me. Yeah. Like, the Liliana plus isn't that relevant, but I want to minus this token on my turn and then play Obliterator. Like, that's that's my turn cycle plan. Okay, there is another red mana. Another Fable. Um, that's very good. So that means my Liliana isn't... <laughs> holy shit. Uh, isn't getting, like, 100% maximum value. Um, this probably dies here, keeping this around. Let's go Obliterator squad. Obliterator into Obliterator is going to be really hard for my opponent to beat. It can happen. But, like, Fury is not beating Obliterator. They did not use um, the looting ability, so they have a good card in hand. I don't know what that card is. Like, I legitimately don't know what they're looking for here. I guess a copyable creature for Kiki Jiki is pretty good. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. This attacks each combat if able. This is a time where my opponent probably needed to play Legion Warboss in the second main phase to avoid this exact scenario. Alright, so let's go ahead and block. My opponent has to sacrifice a permanent, which they can kind of do. Um, with the reflection of Kiki Jiki, like that helps out a lot. Okay, cool. So now I can go ahead and edict away the Legion War boss. Or at, at least I'm presuming that is going away. I guess there's worlds where they keep it to copy with Fable of the Mirror Breaker. All right, we'll play Obliterator number two. This is this is good clean magic right here. This is very enjoyable. <laughs> Opponents having fun with it too. So opponent is basically dead to just obliterators crashing in next turn. I think I have stolen their trophy from them. Again, like, things can happen, but, like, what the fuck are you supposed to do as a red deck versus double Phyrexian obliterator? Yeah, we have, we have gotten the, the GGs. I have indeed stolen their first trophy from them. I, as the evil person as I am, obviously do not care. No, seriously, that was a really fun game. I enjoyed that a lot. But it says, I wish I could have put up a better fight for the video. Friend, don't worry. Like, double Phyrexian Obliterator is in play. Like, video's doing fine. Alright, opponent, uh, just go ahead and, uh, play in a Fiery Confluence on their way out here. Alright, uh, yeah, I'll just uh, send these sideways. I guess I can play a Douthy Voidwalker first so that those things go to Graveyard. Send them. Yeah, so... These have to be blocked here. That damage tramples over, putting my opponent to one, and then they have to sacrifice a whole bunch of permanents. Yeah, good goodbye everything. And there's there's just no no coming back from something that devastating. I respect giving me the flawless victory there of uh no no permanence in play. There is the concession. Momo Baggins, I may have stolen your trophy, but I'm hoping to claim it myself in the last round. All right, final round, trophy time. While I don't have a one drop, I have 
a great hand. I think I'm going to go ahead and keep this one. Um, if I don't get turn one comboed here, like I have a him for disruption, a Bob to start grinding card advantage, and a Phyrexian Obliterator to, you know, obliterate. It does one thing, and it, it, it does so beautifully. In fact... Okay, cool. Ponder, ponder. All right, it's not Glistener Elf. I was, I was so not fucking ready for Glistener Elf right here. Um, if we're playing against something like Omniscience, Him to Turok is a great card to try and like cripple my opponent's early resources. Um, but like we very easily could be uh, playing against like a control deck. I say as they play Lotus Puddle. So a Storm deck like Ant is possible. A Show and Tell deck is possible. I have good resources. Or okay, we're playing against Storm. Um, this is scary. I am hoping they just pass the turn after playing this stuff out, and they're just like playing it out to play it around discard. Like if they can go now, they're going now. Like I can't stop them. I don't have Dark Ritual Opposition Agent. Well, damn. There was a long pause here, so I'm not entirely sure. Oh, I see have to be goblins is that the problem has to be goblins against potentially a plague engineer deck yeah that is the problem i think that's good enough because i don't have the plague engineers in the main deck fuck um let me take a quick look here yeah, i have no game one sweeper mm, opponent also has main deck veils good to know about that's a major pain in the ass for me I, I am going to concede here rather than show my opponent any cards because I just have no outs to 16 goblins like that. All right. Inquisition. Good. Plague Engineer. Good. Lily of the Veil. Good. Surgical and Leyline are medium minus, and I'm going to try not to play those cards. The Sudden Edicts need to go. Um, Obliterators are very slow here. I can kill my opponent with whatever if they can't combo off. So, like, since that's not a disruptive creature for this matchup, like, I probably don't want that. And then one Douthy Voidwalker or Turok is probably going to get cut to round things out. Surgical Extraction actually is not bad. Um, not because of, like, the graveyard part, but, like, the ability to rip a tutor out of my opponent's deck or a wish out of my opponent's deck is pretty strong. I actually might play those. Like, I could go down three Douthy Voidwalker to play the two Surgical Extractions to pair with my discard. This still leaves me with 16 creatures to finish the game with. I can probably go down one land, actually, and keep another Delphi Voidwalker. But I guess I need to hit, like, three mana on curve every single time. Like, I just can't miss a land drop in the early game. I'm also not sure if Delphi Voidwalker is better than Turok. Like, if I start getting to turn four, Turok is very good. Turok also scales up very well. Probably a very marginal difference at the end of the day. I'm not going to sweat it. Yeah, this is this is a pile of discard. I think I can just Inquisition on turn one. There's like exactly one card that Inquisition misses that I care about. I think I'm just going to lead on Inquisition to not lose the life here. All right, so the opponent goes Rite of Flame. That's two mana. And then they cast another Rite of Flame. Four mana. Opal won't be turned on. They have four mana, seven total mana. Is enough to... Hmm. I can't take the Veil here. Super annoying. I need to take this Burning Wish. Not equipped to beat goblins right now. Alright, there's the Delta. So, if I play Thoughtseize this turn, my opponent Veils. I have a Disruptive thing for next turn that gets around Veil. I am just going to cast a Turok here. And, like, not give my opponent their Veil of Summer value. There's worlds where my opponent will just, like, cycle Veil of Summer. I will get my value that way. Um, it looks like not here. Yeah, rats. Wanted to get that with Opposition Agent. That's fine. It's a scary card, to be sure. Like, my opponent has a lot of mana. They just need the ability to, uh... Oh, man, what if they don't fetch? What if I draw Dark Ritual? Okay, they're fetching. Their mana is actually kind of awkward here uh, in terms of, like, fetching to get both red and green. Okay, so they are going for red. If they can play out, like, LED Mox Opal and one other artifact, they can still keep green up. 
Okay. Not surprising. Also not surprising. One more artifact to keep up Veil. One more artifact to keep up Veil. Alright, so... I'm going to bash, bash in for two here. And then I will just pass my turn with Opposition Agent up. This Veil of Summer is, like, absolutely cramping my style. Uh, but... Hopefully I can just, like, play some bears and just kill my opponent. Alright. Let's hit for five. Drop opponent to 11. I can give my opponent a card this turn in order to take two cards next turn. I don't really want to do that, though. Ooh, it is a decay. That's very scary for me. Ugh. Alright, let's crash in. I think now that I have three of these... I need to just play one. I just need to make this trade. And I'm so confident that Veil of Summer is happening that I did not uh, rock. So in case you're not familiar with this one, because like this doesn't see a lot of play, you and Primus you control gain hexproof from blue and black until end of turn. All right, so this is this is the big scary turn. This is the turn where like my my opponent can potentially go off. They have so much mana, like, especially if those Rite of Flames are still there. All right, attempt Thoughtseize. That's so much mana. Alright. I will take an LED. Build to that. Attempt Thought Seize. Take a Rite of Flame. Attempt Thought Seize. Take a Rite of Flame. Opponent is dead next turn. Like, Turok grows. So this is their turn to spike something relevant. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm f 6 Like, if you spike a tutor, you spike a tutor, and there's nothing I can do about it. Okay, there's Chromox. There's a Burning Wish. This is going to be a Peer into the Abyss, which I think kills me. That's super unfortunate. Yeah, there's the Peer. The opponent goes to two, and then they should very easily have a kill from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's Dark Ritual. Charm is well above lethal at this point. As long as the opponent doesn't, like, fuck up their colors somehow. Um, they've got it. There's a couple Rite of Flames. I guess I should pop out that zone. Yeah. Yeah, and there's Burning Wish for a Tendrils. That's frustrating. Like, the opponent had to hit a Tutor off the top. And when the stack clears, I am dead. And unfortunately, I end up with a 4-1. And we don't get my boy Phyrexian Obliterator into the 5-0 decklist dump this week. We'll try again some other time. Overall thoughts on the decklist legitimately good like huge thumbs up um this is a deck that is playing a lot of the most powerful black cards ever printed and like the synergy between these cards uh, is good um while we didn't play against like a pile of decks with white removal in this league turok scaling up was absolutely relevant um at multiple times in this league like it regularly got to like a four or five power creature and like that as, like, another Phyrexian Obliterator-sized creature is a huge problem. Um, sometimes these discard decks, like, have issues closing games, and, like, Turok and Obliterator and the unblockable Douthy Voidwalker kind of, like, made a package of things that actually closed the game fast enough that we took advantage of the hole that we were punching via discard. Um, ultimately, I don't know if playing Phyrexian Obliterator is going to be better than playing something like Routing Regisaur. Like, Routing Regisaur has huge downsides, but, like, it also hits, like, a truck and is castable off of Dark Ritual on turn one, unlike Phyrexian Obliterator, which is a turn two play. And, like, that, I think, was relevant in one of our games versus the uh, Mono Red Prison deck. Um, I don't think I ever activated this throughout the league. I think there was a situation where I almost did. Uh, but then, like, I needed to play it for to play an Obliterator or something like that. Um, but generally speaking, I like the effects that I had access to in the main deck and sideboard. And uh, this was a ton of fun to play. Like, would be happy to play something like this again. Uh, who knows, maybe maybe sometime we'll play uh, Hypnotic Specters again for funsies. That's another combo with Turok, right? All right. Anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please click the like button on the way out. If you're new here and you made it this far in the video, just saying, there's going to be a lot of other fun videos like this one. Please consider subscribing. Have a great rest of the day. And if you want to financially support my content, please consider doing something like becoming a YouTube member or a Patreon subscriber. See ya!